Have you ever felt shame or guilt as you're walking your spiritual path? Have you ever felt bad or worse when attempting a new modality? Have you heard, do it my way or you're wrong and you will never grow as a spiritual healer from a mentor? You may have experienced toxic spirituality or spiritual bypassing. These are forms of spiritual abuse. How do you know if you've encountered them? Do you know what they look like? These are important to be aware of because it can directly affect your spiritual growth. So what signs can you look for to navigate through it? Today, we're, we are looking at those concepts and giving you suggestions on how to deal with toxic spirituality. Stick with us to the end of the video to get some tips on recognizing the signs, reclaiming your sovereignty, and make preparations to leave, should that be necessary, while looking for spiritual guidance and continue your spiritual awakening. So let's start the conversation. Hey, mystics. If you're new here, welcome. And if you already know us, welcome back. I'm Susie Parker Goins. I'm Lisa Stewart. And I'm Kai Bertrand. Welcome to the Mystic Mosaic Podcast. We're here to help clarify, illuminate, normalize, and encourage you as you develop your gifts so you can confidently build a sustainable lifestyle for you, your family, and even your career. We have to put out the disclaimer. We are providing information to you to use as a launching point for your own spiritual journey. We are not giving free readings or medical advice. Information provided here is for educational purposes only. So let's get into it. What is toxic spirituality? Susie, you want to start? Sure. We're going to start with, with spiritual bypassing. What is it? Well, it's, uh, it's when somebody refuses to take responsibility for their own growth and their own thoughts and, and actions. They're putting it off on source or they're putting it off on their mentor. They're not taking responsibility for themselves. There's also on the other side of this toxic positivity. Um, and that is those folks who are positive and they're asking you to look at the best side of things in spite of all these other lessons or or issues surrounding it. It's it's ignoring that dark side or the work that's required in healing. You know, it's always it, these folks come across as, oh, only love, only light here. They don't look at the shadow work that we need to do. That's very important. Um, and that um, they are excluding certain feelings. They say, no, everything's good and all of this. And so you don't get a chance to really grow. Um, sometimes they also say, you just need to work harder as opposed mm. to those times when you are exhausted and you need to rest. Yeah, well, I, I can jump in here because... Um, cool. the toxic positivity thing, um, it, it drives me crazy because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of what I do helps people to like remove negative energy from people, places, and things. And mm -hmm. so a lot of these, you know, I've met practitioners who are like, oh no, you know, we don't do anything with the dark side. I said, but what you don't understand is a lot of the people who come to you have problems because of the dark side. So you if can't you ignore, ignore it. that, you're ignoring the bulk of the problem. So that, right? yeah, so that, that makes me crazy. You know, like somebody will come yeah. in and they're saying stuff like, you know, I keep having nightmares and my kid's not sleeping and my husband's acting really weird and I can't figure out what the heck is going on. And you mm -hmm. get these toxic positivity people who are like, well, you just, you just need to uh, put more light in your house, bring more love into it. And, you know, and I'm like, you know what? And yeah, yeah. those are, yes, you need those things, but you need other things as well. There's, there's more it's to the story that needs to happen. There's more balance that's required. Toxic positivity completely ignores the need for balance. Just more right. light, like you were saying, kind of. Yeah, more yeah, of this I, and not you got to make room for something else so you have to let go of some things yeah you, you can't you can't apply happy thoughts to a dead plant you gotta pull out the dead plant you know reconstitute the soil and replant something new yeah like um i was going to actually teach a class once upon a time about um 
teaching people how to identify how, you know, if they might have something, you know, like a ghost or something in their house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told by this organization that I was going to teach through that I, that they wouldn't let me teach the class there because they said, oh, you know, what we're doing here is we're trying to teach classes based, you know, that are enlightening. I'm like, sweetie, the word enlightenment and enlightenment literally means to bring light. Yeah. So me to, this, to illuminate. Actually, yeah. yeah. To bring light yeah. to the exactly. subject mm -hmm. so that people have an awareness of it so that they don't actually end up in a worse situation than when they started because they're like, oh, wait, that's a sign of whatever it is. So they can identify it and get it handled before it gets worse. Yes, yeah, so I was astounded when I was told that what I was teaching was not was not enlightening. I'm like, what? Yeah. And the toxic yeah. positivity ignores, again, I've said it before that it ignores the shadow work. But if you look at it, we need shadow and light because then that gives it dimension. It gives it depth, mm -hmm. texture. Yeah. And, and I don't believe I know of anybody who's had one of those lives that was absolutely rainbows and unicorns and the fairies sliding <laughs> down the, and all that. We all have lives and we all have life challenges and struggles and things. And those who ignore that part of it, you know, that just kind of yeah. harkens back to that 1950s. Everything's okay. I'm fine. It's like, no, right. no, you're not. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's like, it's like bad software, right? When you have all these bugs in your software, they just end up applying patches like band-aids. And then so sooner or later they become features because they've been around for so long. It's like, you know, at what point do you just dump the software and start again? You you can't apply band-aids and expect things to go away. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's such a great phrase, expecting it to go away. That is pivotal, pivotal in this is you expect the bad to go away. It's like, no, no. Yeah. Sometimes you have to pay attention. You can't just sweep everything up under the carpet. You can't just do that. You've got to look at it and address it. And spiritual bypassing is that as part of that, it's like, no, it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Cause, cause yeah. things no, grow fine. in the dark. <laughs> things grow in the dark. They do. Yeah. You know, the other thing about the, you know, another point of spiritual bypassing is when you have people who have acknowledged, for instance, like that they have a ghost in a client's home or something. And they're like, okay, yeah, we're going to clear the ghost out of your house. And you, you know, you're going to be fine. And, you know, we're just going to drive it out of your house. And, you know, my next question is like, okay, well, where did you put it? Because if you drove it out of the house, did it move next door until your protection fades and then it'll come back? Like, where did it go? Yeah. You know, don't just shuffle it next door. Like, what? Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's like are we playing musical chairs with the thing like what are we doing like, yeah you gotta think it through i think that's part of spiritual bypassing means you're not thinking it through you're just doing we'll make it go away and yeah. and i think an alert an intelligent person will go to where <laughs> so <laughs> down my generational line somewhere in the land where where so yeah i think that's really Mm -hmm. those are really good points yeah yeah and you know and you know just allowing the you know it's like completing the circle of everything just and understanding that you know our world consists of light and dark in in all aspects you know we have winter we have summer we have light we have dark you know we, all of it has to do with you know the balance that we live in you know just as we exist you know we are right we energetically speaking we are beings of both heaven and earth and you know as yeah. people love to believe in angels it annoys me to no end that people don't believe because of this toxic positivity they don't believe in demons i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> you don't have to believe in them they still exist yeah. exactly yeah <laughs> oh my gosh that's so so metaphorical just because we don't believe it exists the hard parts ex we don't believe hard parts exist it doesn't mean that they don't that's okay it's really good i like that yeah i like gaining know, insight it's, even it's as like, we talk it's a thing about like oh if i can't if i can't see it it can't affect me i'm like well you can't see germs with the naked eye but they could knock you on your butt <laughs> you know it's like let's not yeah I'm like yeah come on now Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it, it was like when I thought I came down with a head cold in January, 
only to be faced with the nasty fact that it was Omicron. You know, I, I was doing everything right and I still got it, you know, um, and I had to acknowledge that fact because mm -hmm. being flat on my back for five days, I wasn't going anywhere. And it's like, OK, this is what it is. <laughs> Facing uh, the facts. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that's and that's the thing. It's like you can't ignore you can't ignore things. You know, all you can do is just do the best you can with it. And when you can't like, it, you know, and you get to the point where you can't do anything about it, then you need help. And you need like real help, not this, right. well, you know, it's all rainbows and sunshine and, and the, what is the lesson here? We've been talking about this <laughs> earlier, right? This, that is our, our, that is like the burning phrase. Like what is, what was the, what is, you know, there's a reason for everything. And what is the lesson here? Like two phrases you would you never want to hear ever right. in your life. Right. And you never want to see them unless you want to get punched in the face either. <laughs> <laughs> there's no also kidding. there are also those practitioners who will assume that they know everything about it you know i've had those you know it goes back to the consent thing i i can do this for you and as opposed to i think a more emotionally intelligent way is how can i support you in this what do you need so what's the lesson is one of those overused phrases i think um and and then just let's broach that subject about practitioners, what to look for in some of these practitioners, because it's not just regular folks. I don't know if that sounds elitist or not, but it's not just people. <laughs> it's even practitioners experience or, or demonstrate the spiritual bypassing or um, toxic spirituality. I feel like Kai's pretty passionate about this. Of course we all are, but let's, let's Kai, what's your take on it? Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, I have come across a lot of practitioners who will like blame, you know, like, well, you know, there's a reason why this happened to you. It's because you attracted it. And, you know, basically it's like, it's your fault for doing that. And, you know, if you had, if you had done what I told you to do, this wouldn't have happened to you. Um, if you were actually, vibrating higher. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I've, I've actually heard people say, and I'm like, are you joking? I'm like, you know, everybody has, you know, everybody has their challenges. And it's like, you you know, even if you do everything exactly the way you think you're supposed to, things happen. That is life. You know, there's there's no one who's who's perfect. There's no one who's immune to spiritual challenges. It doesn't happen. Um, and so... When you come across people who who do that sort of thing, they make you feel bad about yourself. They make you feel guilty about stuff. Like that is like the quintessential toxic spirituality person that you want to have nothing to do with because everything that you do, like it's going to be, you know, it's not, whatever you do is not going to be good enough. It's not going to be you, you know, you're not going to do it the way they want you to do it. It's like, there's going to be conditions for everything that they do. So these are the yeah. things that you need to watch out for. And on top of that, people who tend to do this often, not always, but they can be energy vampires. Mm. People who yeah. want you to spend more time with them because they're literally taking your energy. That's how they're, you know, that, that makes them feel good. And sometimes it makes them feel good when you feel bad. And then that gets into yeah. narcissism, which yeah. sometimes you mm -hmm. will run into those because narcissists are everywhere. You know, it's not like yeah. you walk into a room and go, oh, this is a room full of narcissists. It's not like that. It's just like any room you walk into, like there's going to be a narcissist in there. I mm -hmm. promise there's going to be yeah. one. And so yeah. in terms of spirituality, in terms of mentors, you are going to run into them eventually. And it's just a matter of time. And you have to, the whole point of us doing this now is that you will start to recognize some of the signs of those things so that you mm -hmm. can go the other way. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what you were touching on uh, earlier, Kai, is aggrandizement, right? It's uh -huh. somehow people feel that they're more awakened in their spiritual development than others. So that can be very problematic. Oh yeah, I love people like that. So when people start talking to me as if they're like from some lofty height or something, I just roll my eyes and walk away. I'm like, really? I was like, no. 
um, yeah, especially the ones who are, or who like to say, I'm the only one that can help you with stuff. You know, if this mm -hmm. thing, whatever it is, your problem is, you know, I'm the only one that can help you with that. I'm happy to do it, especially if you're going to pay me a lot of money mm -hmm. or you're going to, you know, jump into my program or buy my thing or whatever it is. Um, as soon as they start talking exclusivity to you, that's like the classic sign to keep going because yeah. 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 Other, other ones that, that set up my alarm, my, my flags are the ones who are so willing to help you that they ignore their own stuff. That's like more spiritual oh. bypassing. If, if yeah. their life is in turmoil and yet they completely ignore it. And, and for me, I can feel that energetically and just go, yeah, I'm okay. Thank you very much. You can feel that. I think that goes along with energy vampires. They will suck all of your energy out because you're at a place. I, I strive to be at a place at, especially at events where I'm focused. <laughs> it may take me a while to get that focus, but to be at a place where I am in a place of service to help other folks. And some folks just walk in, just hoovering up all of the things that they can. And that's where Kai's thing on shielding, her course on shielding, I'm sure will be most helpful for folks to learn about. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I mean, we, as practitioners, I mean, we have our own stuff, you know? So for me, like when I'm working with someone, like I make sure like, okay, here's my stuff. It's going to sit over here for a minute while I'm trying to do, you know, your own, you know, whatever I need to do for my client. And, you know, and that's okay. That's, you know, people do that in when they go to work, right? You leave your stuff at the door and that's what you're supposed to do. It's when you notice that when you talk about your issues, that the person starts talking about their issues and it's like, wait a minute, is this about me or you? Mm -hmm. We're projecting you to, much. Yeah. You know, then you're like, Hmm. You know, that's something you got to think about. Yeah. You are not picking up your own stuff, you know, just set it aside and not bringing out your stuff. You know, we had that once an emotional baggage drop off box at the our front door um, at a party once. And like, leave your emotional baggage there. You can pick it up on the way out if you want. We incinerated the box. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Well, I do that with demons, so we, as you know. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Drop I, I love demons here. <laughs> <laughs> I still love the idea of having all the demons hanging out by the front door, like parents waiting for their kids all smoking or their, yeah. Or their limousine drivers and like, yeah, yeah, I'm here for a little while. You know, who's, who's, who's your human. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, when I create a shield for, for something, and, and people come in, I actually make sure that if they have any negative entities attached to them, that they actually stay outside the building and they actually sit like in a metaphysical pocket on the outside of the building so that when the person comes in, we can do whatever we need to do. And when the person leaves, they can take their attachment with them when they go. So that's what the, the jokes are is like, you know, that, that, you, know, that you can you. actually feel like there's like something in the pockets outside when you, you know, when you work with energy. So yeah, we, so we make jokes about how there's pockets full of demons outside. It was <laughs> revolutionary. When you explained that to me, I was like, this is awesome. This is great. So I, yeah, I do that going into the grocery store. I do it all over the place. Now it's brilliant. That's one of the things I love about what it is we do. It doesn't have to have stuff. I don't have to have branded stuff so I can say I'm doing this, but it can be done wherever you are. So, so I'm, I'm confused, Susie. Do you leave your demons at the door at the grocery store? <laughs> well, because I impulse shop as it is. I don't need them <laughs> chiming in on it. I'll never get out of the store. <laughs> it was funny. You're like, yeah, I do that at the grocery store. And, I, and I'm that. like, you, you've got pockets of demons. You just leave all over the place. It's little surprises for people. <laughs> I do. And then my blue warrior comes in, knocks them out of the park, and boo, boo, boo. We're all good. <laughs> there but it that goes, be, folks. I wonder. <laughs> but yeah, and and, you know, as I'm learning more and more about this stuff, I do see that there are some practitioners who um, 
golly, they have their own demons with them. We've already talked about those who won't address their own things, but there's also that like guru attitude. Mm -hmm. The I'm the only one who can do it. Have you had experience with that, Lisa? I have in other markets and I remember, mm -hmm. I remember sitting in a weekend conference and just sitting there shaking my head because the guru was parading back and forth on the stage saying, and this, this really turns me inside out stating you can only achieve these results through me. If you have Ooh. to take out a sec, Oh, if you have to take out a second mortgage to pay for my course, then I encourage you to do it. Oh yeah. And she wasn't the only one I've been getting that as of late. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Marketing doesn't have to be about taking out a second mortgage for your business. No. Well, that's like full on cult status is what that is. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. sitting in my chair, just watching people, you know, and I, I, I was, I was frightened. Honestly, I was getting full body goosebumps going, and, and had I known then, I would have gone and taken a salt shower. This was probably four years ago. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's scary. That that's, is scary. That is frightening. The, the cult status surrounding some personalities is kind of mind boggling. I was involved with uh, with one mentor and and I was part of the cult for a while. And as I would make growth, she would just kind of blow it off and not support me, even though I had people in the group to do it. And then what really happened one day is that um, she pretty much said, no, you have to be at this thing, at this retreat. And in exchange, I would work some. At the end of it, they're all working and I'm tired. I was really wiped out and I got yelled at because things weren't made clear to me. Like I didn't know I had to do things. I didn't know I had to read this. And then I was blamed. So she had her own spiritual bypassing there by not taking responsibility for educating me about what needs to happen and i can be borderline spiritual bypassing by saying i didn't know blah, blah. so mm -hmm. after this conversation where it was really quite heated i was given the assignment of calling everybody in the retreat who was involved and ex and apologize to them i didn't think i did anything wrong but as i talked more and more to people most of them said no you didn't do anything wrong so that resulted in a big break. I don't know what they're doing right now, but that whole guru status being up on a pedestal, I think is dangerous mm -hmm. because we do mm -hmm. still have egos and being able to break it down and say, we're still human. Then you're toppled off the pedestal. And then it's just, I just want to be one of those who maintains it. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty and amazing. That, that's the thing when you, when you get into a lot of this stuff, um, you know, because of the fact that people know so much, like I've, I, I mean, I've had that, like people come up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, you know so much. And I'm like, yeah, my life is still a mess. So, you know, like, don't put me on a pedestal because I'm not, I'm not there yet. Like, you know, I'm still, mm -hmm. there are some mm -hmm. days when I'm still crawling on the ground. So don't, <laughs> like, don't, you know, don't yeah. put me in this elevated position. Yes, I know a lot. Yes, I can teach you a lot. Yes, I can help you prevent a lot of issues. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not, this exalted person that needs to be revered um oh you're not saint kai no <laughs> no i'm not no and that's that's another know. thing I, I tell people all the time i'm a healer not a saint don't get confused because i will not go out of my way to, i will go out of my way to plummet off the pedestal i will do something <laughs> so mm -hmm. annoying that people yeah. don't talk yeah. to me and i'm like let me yeah, let me tap remember. dance right off of this so you can all laugh. <laughs> yeah, no, so you know, and I've joked about it in the past. I'm just like, I would like to be a guru, but then you know, really, I really don't because I, you know, there's there's a lot of responsibility in that. Like when as you, a cult leader, yes. <laughs> well, yes. It, I mean, there like if you take your status seriously. That's a lot of responsibility because you're literally responsible for the development, for the growth, for the, you know, because people literally just hand you their power when you do that. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So if you're yeah. a Pick responsible up. person, like that's a lot of responsibility. Like, but if you're like a narcissist, that's like par for the course, right? Um, right. So, yeah, I, I always tell people like, if you know, if you have this thing where it it's 
more like an exclusive club because people like that exclusivity like it's us and them mm -hmm. you know like we are the chosen ones oh i i can't tell you how many times i've heard that one like you know we are we are oh. chosen i'm like for what socks what do you what <laughs> what do you mean like what are they, just like, the cool you know, kids i like we all wear the same t-shirts <laughs> great like <laughs> yeah what does this yeah. mean yeah. So yeah, all this you know, <laughs> stuff about exclusivity stuff. I, I'm just like, I, I just roll my eyes and walk away. I'm like, oh, uh -huh, you, yeah, you have a good time with that, and you know, yeah. protect your bank account because I'm sure that's coming next. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, so that that kind of stuff. So when people come across people, and they're like, well, you know, I met this really, and 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 part of it is like the leaders, the guru people. They're usually so charismatic that they make you feel like you're the only person in the room that they're talking to. And that's fine. As long as there's no actual commitment on your part, like there's no harm in hearing them speak. Cause a lot of them, they are very knowledgeable. They know a lot of stuff. They've been around lots of experience, you know, in other words, don't drink the Kool-Aid is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, and the people who gather around them can be, I, I find that some of these guru types yeah, do I want to use prey? We'll prey upon those people who don't have Ooh. that, who haven't given themselves that permission to question everything. I think that's, mm -hmm. I, I'm trying not to put us as a trio up on some kind of pedestal, you know, have this little arch with our faces on it with the wings and stuff. Um, <laughs> but I got a fallen <laughs> halo. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, look, a pedestal. <laughs> but, Dive. Um, Swan dive. <laughs> but you also got to be aware of those folks who don't want to take responsibility from their own actions, who are clients, you know, um, it can happen that those are the ones who are primed to become a part of these cults or these, these, um, these people who want to wield their own ego driven power on them. So, and then there's that, you know, sense of codependency. I know folks who like draw cards in the morning, I'll draw a card and I'll look at it and go, Nah, I don't like that one. <laughs> and, and I'll pull one. And that's Oracle abuse. <laughs> to see, and I never knew there was a word for it. I just thought it was me going, uh, for me, it's like, I don't get it. Oh, another one. And there is that. Susie doesn't want to have... do the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me go there. <laughs> Not today. That's another episode. But um Brainford. Sorry. No. Okay. So drawing the cards. I don't want to do the cards. Where was I? Oracle abuse. I have Oracle abuse. Yeah. I've, I've heard of one of my, one of the first uh, mentors that I had, she had people who would call her and say, tell me what I need to know. Mm. And it's just like, no, no. Just handing my power over. Yeah. And I feel for me, at least a, a, a healer, a reader, whoever it is, who allows me that space to be empowered. They'll give me tools. They'll give me ideas for me yeah. to work on. That to me mm -hmm. is, is a, a, a healthy relationship. It's those who just give yeah. over all of their powers. And sometimes that includes money. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't, I don't want somebody else's power. So, or their energy there. And that's another buzzword for me is sovereignty. I want people to have their yeah. own sovereignty. Yeah, well, and right. I do, you know, I'm the, like, here's your reading, here's some advice, here's some things to think about, and then bye-bye. I don't want mm -hmm. you to be dependent on me. I just, I just don't, I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. And I don't want to be, um, you know, for me, that's like a, it's a form of binding, like we talked about last time. I'm like, I don't mm. want that. Mm -hmm. it, not yeah. And that's that's not spiritual, that's not spiritual bypassing. That is, as you just said, this is sovereignty and, and not binding somebody to you. So there's a difference there. Right. And yeah, and what I was going to add is that I think that there are other tools that also allow a person to bypass, right? It could be, I'll look at my horoscope every day to dictate what my day is going to look like, right? I'm going to call Susie every day to figure out what I need to do. 
I'm going to, you know, consult the Oracle cards and the tarot cards to tell me what to do rather than using it as guidance and going, okay, this is what I've got planned for the day. How do I work it in? What do I need to be mindful of? You know, that's then sitting back into your own power and claiming responsibility for the decisions that you're making. So a tool, you use it as a tool rather than a crutch. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when I first started down this road, um, I knew that I'd been intuitive all my life. And the moment I decided I was going to get a tool, it was going to be a tarot deck. I wanted to learn tarot. This was three years ago, three years ago, next month. And I made an agreement with my higher self and the angels and spirit guides I didn't know I had around me. And I said, okay, I promise never to use this as a crutch. I promise to use this as a tool until I feel confident to move, to level up and move forward. So we can clarify that as a crutch, uh, as it fits into spiritual bypassing, you were just mentioned how it's a tool and it gives you uh, guidance or an in intuition about what to look out for, as opposed to the cards told me to do this. Right. That's the big difference between those two I see. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to be, be beholden to the cards, right? I don't want right. to be beholden to any guru. And for me, it's being open-minded, questioning everything, and, and listening to what the people, the practitioners in the spiritual world have to say. And I, go, and I have to qualify it and go, how do I feel about this? And so I, you know, give it time to kind of incubate it and integrate it and go yeah that part works for me this one the jury's still out on i need i need you know some more experience with it or i need some more information in order to really decide whether or not that fits within my paradigm yeah it's like the other thing to think about is um be wary of when someone tells you that you know that they that they can guarantee success only with their program Mm -hmm. saying that there's only one way to get there and it's only through yeah. that because yeah. spirituality doesn't actually work like that there are there are many paths as many people as there are there are many different paths everybody mm -hmm. has a different way of doing things you know if you decide to jump into a particular lineage or a particular healing modality you can choose mm -hmm. to follow it to the letter or not that mm -hmm. is your free will um, and that's something to think about is when you are hanging out with some of these people and you realize that they're telling you that you can only do it this way and that you right. feel like you don't have any free agency, that's a problem. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to broach a really quick conversation with the two of you. I know that we had this before offline. And I'd like to have it again because I think it's super important and it it talks, it, it piggybacks off of what you just said, Kai, and that is lineage. And I know that I've had questions about shamanism and I want to be super careful as a white person who's privileged, right, that I'm not encroaching on somebody else's modality or another culture's um, way of life. So can we kind of talk about shamanism just a little bit so that we can get some clarification on that and and who is it for and, and can anybody be a shaman or is it just a select group no it's like i think shamanism is for everybody it depends on you know what lineage you're claiming like you know if you're a white person and you're claiming to be a navajo that that might be a bit of a stretch unless you grew up as part of the navajo nation and you know whatever but i mean the Celtics had shamans, the Scots, you know, Scotland had shamans. There were shamans all over Europe. So just because you're white doesn't mean you're not a shaman. Um, there are still shamans in Russia. There are shamans in Mongolia. There, you know, there are shamans all over the world in different traditions. So it just depends on the lineage that you are feeling drawn to. Mm -hmm. um, I've met shamans who are you know, trained in a Peruvian tradition, they are, they are white as white can be, but they are, they are shamans. They are people of power. Like I can, you know, when they decide, when they start their ceremonies, like you feel the power. So that means that that lineage has accepted them 
and has allowed them to access that power. So just because you're white doesn't exclude you from shamanism. Um, Because I've met lots of people. Um, You know, I've encountered other Hawaiians who wanted to pick up the the lineage of being a kahuna. And I'm like, okay, well, we, we need to work on that a little bit. And then there are other people who are like, you know, they're 100% native and want nothing to do with it. And that's okay. Like everybody is called to their part to do their part in their way. So if someone is shamanistic, like they have shamanistic abilities, there's no reason why they can't follow a path. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific path. Mm -hmm. I think it gets into the cultural appropriation, like Kai was saying, you know, I may be part Cherokee, but I've not lived that life. And I will not present myself, say, as Asian or as as Hawaiian and just say there, there was an actor like in the 70s um, and he would he was doing some sort of environmental being aware of it, the environment. And he's actually Italian or Sicilian, but he portrayed himself in this commercial as tribal. And then he later changed his story up so that he was raised as a Native American and all this stuff when, you know. He's not. It's that sort of appropriation that honestly, not many things offend me, but that's the stuff that that bothers me is when you assume this. So yeah, we can we I feel we do have the ability to do shamanistic practices, but I'm not going to call myself a kahuna. I'm just right. you know, I do shamanistic yeah. practices right now. So yeah, I think that's yeah, an important I mean, difference to make. You know, because I mean I met a shaman that was from Ireland. I was like, oh, didn't know they had them over there, but they do. Yeah. And then I met one Celtic from, shamanism. From yeah, it's a big Hawaii. thing. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, well, you know, so it's I, like, you need to just, you know, I, I always tell people that, you know, you need to follow the tradition that speaks to you. Mm-hmm. And if that happens to be like Native American or something, yeah, you might run into some trouble about that, but it has to do with like, you know, where you have your affinity, where you get your abilities from, and how well it works, you know, because sometimes the color of your skin doesn't necessarily matter when it comes to abilities. Right. I'm keep hearing it's ego. When it's ego driven, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I just did some research Mm -hmm. and discovered that shamanism started in the Neolithic age. So imagine that spreading out over the continents you know where every culture is like okay you know these this is our lifestyle right to be able to walk on the land communicate with nature and our spirit guides and so that that makes me really happy so i'll be investigating more on the celtic shamanism aspect of that yeah so thank you kai cool all right so let's go back to things to avoid or like traps to avoid, things to watch out for. Um, We already talked about, you know, avoid people with the guru attitude that they're the only ones that can help you. Um, The other thing to pay attention to is conditional teaching. Meaning, you know, if you do this, then I will teach you that. Um, Or you can, um, the only way you're gonna learn this is if you buy my products and, or my stuff or my program, blah, 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 whatever it happens to be. Um, you know, it's that exclusivity that, you know, it's the, only the cool kids have it kind of thing. Those are the things that are ego-based and that you need to avoid because I, I can promise you like anything that you want to learn in spirituality, there are probably hundreds of people teaching the same thing, maybe in a slightly different way, but you need to find the one that actually resonates with you, that actually makes you feel good and doesn't want to box you into something i mean that doesn't mean to say that people don't want to make money and they don't want you to buy their stuff but it does mean that they're presenting their things as an option for you to consider versus you must do this that's all Um, i got on that one yeah well and then the other thing we we wanted to talk about was you know sitters clients who are codependent you know not Mm -hmm. taking responsibility for their own work Um, Because you'll see that often sometimes too, like as a practitioner, you have people who come to you and like, well, can I call you tomorrow? 
um, you know, so I can ask you about this thing again, or, you know, can I, can we schedule another appointment for next week? It's like they, they become dependent on you. Um, and mm -hmm. as a practitioner, you know, depending upon where your moral standing is, I mean, for me, that's something I don't want. I want to read, get paid and move on. You know, at, at some point, if you want to have, you have additional questions or something else is happening, then yes, mm -hmm. let's set an appointment. You can come back and we'll, we'll talk again, or, you know, I'll do something for you the next time or whatever, but I don't want it to be this constant thing because that creates a codependency. That's not, that's not healthy for anybody. And no. it makes it so that the person, you know, can actually then turn around and blame the practitioner. Well, you said Blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I encountered a woman <laughs> I did a reading for. She wrote it down, everything, and would come back and say, well, you said this. But that was one of those um, people I read for who kept asking about other people and not, and and I finally, I, I think it was her that I kind of hit the table harder than maybe necessary and said, this is about you and having them focus on themselves. Um, mm -hmm. I... I do have clients who will, I think for me, they're my kind of, some of my favorite kinds of clients are the ones who will do some work and when they get stuck and they can't figure it out, then they will call me back and I'm fine with those, mm -hmm. yeah, but fine. it's the ones who just say, uh, eh, eh, and, and they're not, they're either afraid of what they're going to find. Maybe they think it's too ugly or they just yeah. don't trust what they know. So yeah. I sometimes record the recordings and I have a client who listened to it and she said, Oh, you told me how to do that. And I can do that. <laughs> She's like falling off the earth yeah. as far as I'm concerned right now, but that's great. I love yeah. that when people yeah. incorporate and, and integrate whatever it is we're telling them to do, that makes me so happy that they can move forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a, as a business mentor, I have, um, several packages that allow people to come talk to me specifically about what they want to address in their business. I also have something called mentor by the minute where when people get stuck, they can come back and say, okay, I did this. I'm like, all right, I'll give you some homework. Go off and do that. Don't call me again until you finished it. Or if you get stuck on that homework, you can call me, but I want to make sure that you've done your due diligence. I want to make sure that you have put in the elbow grease mm -hmm. So that way, when you do come back to me, we can talk about what worked and what didn't work and how to tweak it. Yeah, it's like I have a, a mentorship program that's either a two or four week program. And it's the same thing. Like you tell me exactly what it is you want to work on. And for that time period, we will work on that one thing. We will progress. We will, you know, look at roadblocks, you know, all that kind of stuff during that period of time but we we are going to be very specific about what we're working on and we're not going to deviate because this is the thing that we're working on yeah that's what i like about the mentorship program i've actually got a mentorship student now and it is working on giving her that sovereignty that control over herself i think that's the earmark of one of these healthier relationships with a healer and a, and a client it's that you're not telling them what you're you're not telling them what they want to hear you're telling them what is most in service to them in the moment so i've been mm. on those panels where where this woman's asking very directed questions she wanted to get a yes and all of the the uh practitioners on the thing were like nope we're not seeing that another directed question nope that's not what we're seeing and so i that is certainly something that a uh, a client, I think it's their responsibility. They're bypassing things that they're just saying, let me just hear what I I want to hear. And yeah, they're looking for confirmation they're... bias. Yeah, they're looking for confirmation yeah. bias, right? And and that goes in again to Oracle abuse. They're going to continue to ask different practitioners to see if that practitioner yep. will agree with them. It's like, oh well, yep. I love you. You're my favorite because you tell me what I want to hear. Well, that's like, you know, if, if mom says no, go ask dad kind of stuff. It's yeah. like, you know, it, it's like yes. you don't, you don't get to decide what the answer is. You've asked the question. Mm -hmm. Now be open to what the answer is, even if you don't like it, because that is what the answer is. Um, yeah. So, you know, people who are like, well, that, that's, 
that that doesn't resonate with me. It's just like, well, maybe it's not supposed to. You know, maybe it's something. Yeah, and, and, it's like it's not going to be. Or maybe it'll possible. resonate later. It's like, no, 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 no. Yes. Yeah, the expectations are like. Uh, oh, yeah, and, oh, and instant, in, yeah, instant gratification. Oh God, yeah. They want it fixed now, and they want it fixed forever, and you know, divine timing is so not human timing, but you've got to walk that line of, you know, it's going to happen. I've done readings where it's like, okay, look, you want me to tell you about this definite number one, nothing is written in stone. And number two, it's usually a question that involves so many other variables as in other people or other events that need to happen. And yeah, people just want the here and now. And I, I'm sure there are some readers out there who will give a definite timeline. I don't, because I sometimes I can see it, sometimes I don't. But it's not. They want to hear something, and I, I think toxic positivity would would be one of those things where they say, "Oh yeah, it's absolutely going to happen." You may see it, you may not. Yeah, yeah and I, I, I wanted to touch on what you were saying, Susie, about divine timing and the fact that. I was an accidental co-creator and a manifester, and I didn't know this before, you know, I learned all of this three years or so ago. And for me, from a practical side of manifesting, it was really about my intention, right? And it was about what do I want to achieve and what are the steps I need to do to get there? Now, the how, as I now know, is not my business, right? That's the universe. The universe is going to supply the how. But for mm -hmm. me, it's um, what are the steps that I take to achieve the ultimate goal? And, and what does that ultimate goal look like? Well, I have some rough idea about how I'm going to feel when I do achieve that. But I still have to put in the work, right, to make that happen. And I also have to be flexible and open-minded enough to know that if this doesn't work out, I'm going to have plan B, C, and D. I've always been that girl that's had 10 different options. I'm going to go with this one, see what works. If that works, great. I'm going to go to the next set of 10 options. Um, and for me, it's just being flexible and being fluid with the universe because the universe is going to go, oh, you know, that door was open, but we're going to slam that right now because other variables that you talked about are not coinciding with that path. It's like, okay, pivot, let's do this. I can't yeah. be upset about it. I've got to learn to roll with it. Yeah. 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 They, That's hard. That's hard. There are sometimes there's that feeling of you're a wizard, Harry, and you can make it all change when there are still some, some foundational, um, you know, foundation, there's some shaky foundation there thinking that, okay, if I do it this way, this is the only way it's going to work. Again, we go back to those practitioners who say, oh, no, you don't have to worry about that. Just do it here and ignoring those basis, those those fundamental beliefs that you have. There are things if you believe you can create, you're making a step in that direction. If you believe that you need to co-create or you need to take a part in it, it's like saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a job. And then you sit on the couch with mm -hmm. the remote. And it's like, that's mm -hmm. not going to get you a job. You can set the intentions, right. but. You know, right. And that's another podcast. So is modif manifestation. I think we can do a lot of stuff on that, but it's yeah. just looking at it and having a clear eye about it. Those who would judge you, that's, that's that toxic spirituality. Mm -hmm. You just aren't good enough. You must have screwed up some way. It's like, Oh no, no, we yeah. don't go that way. That's, that's all right. Yeah. It's easy to I mean, overthink. Go ahead, Susie. Sorry. It's, it's easy to overthink, but it's easy to completely ignore. Yeah. It's like, it's that thing where, you know, if you, if you had done what I told you to do, you wouldn't be in this predicament or you'd be further ahead by now, or, um, you know, you, you, you know, you, you messed it up because you didn't do exactly what I told you to do. And so now you, you have to start over or you're actually going backwards or, um, you know, it, and it's that judgment that kind of makes you feel like you've misstepped when in, in reality you haven't, because there's no, I mean, one thing that I've learned is that you don't, 
even though you may misstep something, that doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. You know, it's like if you've misstepped, that means that you forgot something, you missed something. So that means you need to go back and pick it up or get it or do it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you can just Mm -hmm. start again. So it's not like, you know, literally like you fell off the mountain kind of thing. Um, But there are people who will make you feel like you did. Yeah. Those are the people you want to avoid. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And definitely the recent experiences have reminded me about the fundamentals I need to have in place. You know, have you seen that memes like point A, point B? That's my plan, and then the reality is, and it's all <laughs> over the place. It's like <laughs> the hairball. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's the way it is. Yeah. And yeah. I judgment is like the quickest way to 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 stumble on your path. So learning to not judge yourself about where you think you ought to be, or or where somebody else thinks you ought to be, I think. When oh. we let that go, yeah. Well, and the other make it easier, but it does release a lot of weight. Have I got something to share? Go ahead, Kai. No, I was gonna say, you know, the other thing about um, when you're dealing with people that you want to avoid is if you've been working with them for a while and they don't recognize your growth, like how much mm. you've changed, like how much you've been able to progress. If they don't if they don't say, Hey, good job on that. Or I've noticed that you've done this. It's like, that's something to worry about. That happened to me. And I don't, uh, never mind. I'm finding that a lot. I'm, I'm finding that to be more the case than I'd like to see, which is really unfortunate. Um, It's important for your mentors to acknowledge that, that you've, that you've progressed that you've moved mm-hmm. forward, that you've like, okay, like, wow, that was a good one. You caught that one that, you know, something, mm-hmm. some acknowledgement mm-hmm. that you have like improved in some way, shape mm-hmm. or form, because that's, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, it's an ego thing. Everybody likes a little pat on the back kind of deal, but at the same time, it's mm-hmm. also just acknowledging that yeah. you have done the work. And that helps to garner self-confidence so that you can go on and take those other things. You're peeling off layers upon layers. And so you'll get to that point where you can go, I did this. Sometimes looking and seeing what your progress has been will will help um, empower you to continue on the work. And it's that's that kind of supportive community I think we all need. Yeah. And And people telling you. Yeah, and, and I think that if you don't have that supportive community today, there um, there's an example that I can provide for everyone. It's called, and it's one of my favorites, it's called Tiny Wins, that if you are a journaler, even if you're not a journaler, put, it, put three stars in your calendar, and each day take a look at some of the things that you've done. Um, have you folded the laundry that day? If so, woohoo, that's a tiny win put that down, you know, next to a star, anything that you've been able to overcome, let it be difficulty, um, let it be a new skill that you're learning, write that down. So that way, when you can reflect back later that week, it's like, oh, look at everything that I've achieved. Look at this. I've grown and I've been able to move forward because of it and then continue my progression that way. I love tiny wins. And um, that's something that actually you can find in my journal planner. But yeah, I just wanted to mention if if you don't have a community right now that can recognize um, the before and after of your growth, then you can do it yourself. Definitely, definitely. It's important to, you know, I mean, it's important for you to do your own self-assessment as well, because if you're not progressing, then you can, you know, it's time to go, okay, well, why is that? Because really- you know, the roadblock to the, your progress is you. So Mm -hmm. if you need to assess why that is, if there's a belief that needs to get handled, if there is some sort of ancestral Uh thing that you need to take a look at, I mean, there's any, you know, past life thing that might be a problem. I mean, there's any number of potential avenues for you to explore, for you to Mm -hmm. figure out why you haven't progressed as much as you thought. Um, 
or that you think you should have. But again, be reasonable about that assessment. You know, like if you're, I mean, because I've run across people who are like, yeah, I've taken Reiki one, I should be able to do whatever, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, not so much. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're not there yet. You're just not there yet. You know, and they're like, but yeah, but I took all the, you know, I, I love the ones who are like, I took all these trainings. I should be able to do everything that you can do. I'm like, you think so? <laughs> because you know training is one thing experience is another and most absolutely healers and psychics they have a combination of both that a lot of times yeah. you know training and experience alone cannot beat yeah so yeah, yeah. That's and, and i the gratification it is and in that imaginary timeline of expectations and it's like back when i was learning martial arts this really bothered me. Back when I was learning martial arts, I learned, I was learning Hakurai Jiu Jitsu. And I was told that through training and time, I might be able to achieve a black belt, which was the end result, right? Through all the colors of belts in about 10 years. Unfortunately, there were other schools of thought out there that said, no, you can be a black belt in a year and a half. And I'm like, ooh. And if you have ever, ever sparred on a dojo bad things happen if you're not properly trained and you don't have the timing right that allows you to kind of renegotiate and and assess it's like oh that throw i could have done better versus oh i can't wait to get my black belt in a year and a half you know where's the priority well everybody's always looking for a shortcut yeah, you know, that's the thing is like you with some of this stuff, there are no shortcuts like, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta right. you gotta do the work. If you don't do the work, it doesn't have it doesn't work. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, or yeah, or you annoyed. end up like Luna, you, you end up like Luna Lovegrade's mother, <laughs> an action that goes horribly wrong. We don't want that. That's why we're here <laughs> to keep that from happening. Exactly. No personal explosions. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, questioning oh. everything. I think that's like a great life philosophy. It's like, and and I feel if there's a mentor who gets sped up with the questions, look at your own questions, but also consider your questions. What do you really want to know? What's really going to be helpful to you? And yeah, doing your research, thinking for yourself. But, you know, at the same time, like, don't overthink it. Like, really, sometimes people Simple will- Simple as like, best micromanage that stuff down to the but what about this and what about that and, what about, and i'm like mm -hmm. like you know what you just need to like let go of it for a minute and then mm -hmm. the, the answers will start to be obvious to you because mm -hmm. usually while you're asking the questions you've actually already answered them yeah that's half of it isn't it asking the right question and i and i think you bring up a really good point kai and that is uh, for me, it's the, the, the energy, right? The, the yin and the yang aspect, the yang aspect being the masculine take bold actions. And then the yin aspect being the divine being, Hey, let's sit back. Let's into it. Um, let's go quiet for a little while and see how things are in the next few days. And then, you know, continue that cycle of taking bold action and moving forward, you know, breaking ground and then sitting back and watching how the ground is responding to, you know, that action that we just took and good things can happen when you actually stop and pay attention. So I, I wanted yeah. to thank you. Thank you for that. And also I wanted to thank you for that sequence, which I think blew by a lot of people. And I just want to extol it for a minute. And that is the, the limiting beliefs or the belief system that you might have that you want to kind of unwrap and deconstruct and then maybe move on to, is it an ancestral thing, right? Or is it something else? Yeah. So can you just quickly go through that once again, so we can kind of highlight that for everybody, for them to take a look at the different levels that they might escalate. Yeah, because a lot of times, if you're not able to progress with whatever you're doing, so if you're you know, working on being a healer and you feel like you know, you're, you're not able to progress as fast as you'd like or that you thought you would, or if you're in the process of manifesting, um, a lot of that has to do with you have a belief somewhere that is holding you back. And it could be your belief. It could be a belief held by an ancestor. 
It could be a belief that came from a past life. Um, it could be any one of those things. And so, um, or it could be just, you know, something that you got handed down from your family or something that was dictated by an experience that you had. You need to figure out where it came from and, you know, find a way to ferret it out using either, you know, emotional freedom technique or whatever other methods that you prefer to use to get at your belief system so that you can actually change that into something that is more in line with what you're trying to accomplish. Um, and like I said, there's like lots of different methods to get at all this stuff, lots of dif different methods to figure out where it came from. Um, the thing that I normally use for finding beliefs or figuring out where that, whether or not I even have them is to use muscle testing. Um, and if you're not familiar with muscle testing, there's lots of YouTube videos on the different methods um, for that. Um, but yeah, that's we actually go ahead. we we actually created a, uh, a session that you can find on my station actually and co-create magic um, about muscle testing and we went through that so that's exciting. But I did want to ask you, Kai, and I know I've asked you this before, and that is, how do I know if I have a limiting belief? What does that look like? How does that show up so that I can start asking that question? Well, it's the thing, like if you're trying to, it, de it depends on what you're, on you're working on. So for instance, you can say, um, you know, if you're trying to be a medium, like, and you can't hear the spirits, <laughs> mm -hmm. you can ask, mm -hmm. you know, is there, it's like, do I have a, you know, a belief regarding that? Like, do I, it could be that you don't think you're deserving of it. It, it could be that you're fearful of it. It could be that you're, um, you know, any number of reasons. So what, it's like, think about the situation and then think about, okay, what could be a belief that could be blocking me? Because sometimes, mm -hmm. for instance, it could be a past life thing. Like, I don't want to be a medium because in a past life, I was like burned at the stake for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something like that. Or it could be that you're, it could be that your reptilian brain to a certain degree maintains a, um, the energy of stuff and, and thinks it's not safe for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so it could be any number of things. So it would just be a matter. It, a lot of it is when you're looking for beliefs, it's like a shot in the dark, trial and error kind of stuff. But I mean, like, you know, start from a logical perspective and just start checking yourself for beliefs. Like, is it safe for me? Like, do I deserve that? Am I worthy of it? Um, you know, things like that. Those are the common ones that will come up when you're checking for beliefs. And then, um, and then when you start to work through them, you'll actually notice your energy change and your abilities will change. So like, if you're manifesting, like, you know, am I, is, am I worthy to receive this money? Is it safe for me to have this money? Is it, um, you know, do I have, do I need to be fearful of having all this money or whatever it is? And then once you do that, then your, your ability to manifest should increase. And then there's some other, you know, then you may run into other things, who knows, but, um, you know, everything is usually around worthiness, fear, safety. Those are like the, the common ones that you'll come across when you come across roadblocks for progress. Thank you. I was just going to ask that. Susie, you want to cut in? Um, uh, you know, it's just reiterating what Ty says, look where you're feeling the resistance and, you know, you're talking about muscle testing. That's one of my favorite ways to do it is I, I ask my body and I wobble back and forth. You can also use pendulums. I've been sitting here clearing for a bit. It's like, I've got a resistance on something and it's like, no, you can clear it. Um, I think it's also important to trust what you get. It's so yeah. easy. You know, we're talking about don't overthink. I've got the t-shirt. Somebody's got a tattoo that says that, but it's just <laughs> Try not to overthink, give yourself that time and space and permission mm -hmm. to look at it. I don't, um, I've encountered people who said they wouldn't work with me because they thought they were going to be too ugly to uh, uncover all this ugly stuff. And I'm like, no judgment here, but you may uncover stuff that is hard. And then going to a practitioner who can hold the space for you. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. But give yourself permission to hear the answer. A lot of folks don't want to. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means, oh, gee, you're human. That's not bad. And question it. Question what you get. Question 
all the things that you need to, but to the point where it's reasonable. Yeah, I, I, I think all of that is such good information. And the one thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to escape from those problems because I know right. in my personal experience that whenever I try escapism, it's always going to come back and bite me in the ass. Mm -hmm. And then I realize, oh, well, it wasn't so bad after all, addressing this thing, right? It's like, oh, because what I've discovered is that sometimes it just takes another perspective for me to break that myth, whatever is holding me um, in fear or in safety, right? Or the feeling of you know, the lack of worthiness, that kind of thing. And sometimes that's all it takes is just a different perspective because it's like, oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, well, that releases everything. Okay, let's do this. Well, and we have, we are at a point where we are exposing or talking more about issues that have been internalized so much. So it can seem like you are slogging and pushing that boulder up the hill because this is an old established paradigm here. But with this collective consciousness coming through and, and working through and chipping away at it, it does get easier. We just need to put in the effort to work to that, to that healing the community. I mm -hmm. sing that song all the time as I heal, you heal, as you heal, I heal. So all the work that we're doing is not just helping ourselves, but it helps other people. Those women who've stood out and said, this has been my experience in the world today. And it brings an awareness and it gives those women, other women permission to say, yeah, this is yeah. what I was wearing or whatever that is. It, it's shedding it's, light. It, it is. It's shedding light on some of that dark. The dark is still going to be there, but there's more light and yeah, yeah. Balance and stuff like that. But it's, it's important that the healing work be done. However, that shows up and finding those people who are in alignment with you, that's, that's an important thing. It, it may not be just anyone you encounter. You may have to look and they may not look like how you think they ought to look. Releasing expectations. It's checking their mm -hmm. energy. That's mm -hmm. a big thing. You know, we're, we're, I, I think we're going to slide into the homework thing. So I would ask um, listeners, it's like to pay attention to how somebody, some mentor's energy feels. Does mm -hmm. it make you feel good? Does it make you feel empowered? I think that's the word I would use. Does it resonate with you? Right. Do, do you feel mm -hmm. empowered or disempowered by that action? And what is that motivation? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so let me ask, how do I know when I've hit a roadblock? Ooh, how do you know? Well, we've talked about being impatient about the timeline. Um, your body will tell you if you're feeling resistance on something. Now, when we were talking about this earlier, it was a blind roadblock was the way you put it. How do you know you yes. are experiencing a roadblock? Um, yeah. yeah. Like, like for instance, when, when I was learning about Reiki and I was wondering, oh, well, this is new. This is interesting. Should I consider taking this? And then suddenly I heard other forms of Reiki and I'm like, wait, is one better than the other? I didn't know there was a difference. What should I know? And when I look in the pricing and so forth, that has forced me to pause before actually jumping into a course unwittingly. And of course, I don't want to take the wrong class. So I felt like there was some kind of blind roadblocks that were in my way and I wasn't sure how to proceed. I encourage people to ask questions. You're you're developing a community. I feel that we are all developing a part of this community. So you can ask. I will Google stuff and I will find, you know, pricing can very much be a problem, be an issue for folks. Um, there are usually some sort of free options and you got to also pay attention to where, what do they offer? That's where I encourage, you know, checking the energy. Does this resonate with you? Because some folks do things for free that are kind of, just kind of thrown out there. And then there are other folks who who charge fees that are just so astronomically high that you think, okay, that's not me. There's usually some sort of middle ground option for us, but it's looking, mm -hmm. doing the, the physical, that, you know, we're talking about manifestation where you can set the intention and do the work. You still need to do the work. You do need to um, 
to ask the questions and, and listen to your intuition. Kai, what do you do? I mean, not, yeah. What do you recommend? Yeah. Well, you know, what I did is, you know, speaking of Reiki is when I got Reiki trained, I was going through the internet, of course, and just trying to figure out, well, first off, I heard, you know, my guides were, were telling me, you need to take Reiki. You need to take Reiki. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> They're like, you just trust us. You need to take it anyway. So I started looking through and it was like pages and pages and pages and pages of, you mm -hmm. know, different teachers in the area. And, you know, some of them were like, you know, from ranging from, uh, you know, a hundred dollars all the way up to $10,000 yeah. for training. And, you know, and I'm looking through all this stuff and I'm, you know, just like overwhelmed by it, the information. And so I mm -hmm. basically just said to my guides, you know, if you want me to take this, you need to tell me who my teacher is, because I, there's no way I'm going to be able to sift through all this stuff, call all these people and try to figure out what I'm supposed to do. So the yeah. next site I clicked on was actually the woman who ended up being my teacher. Mm. And so I didn't, I didn't overthink it. I'm like, okay, well, here we go. I clicked on the thing. I called the number. I spoke to her for five minutes and she, you know, she talked to me about it and the price was absolutely reasonable. And she's like, and by the way, I'm actually getting ready to do Reiki one and two this coming weekend. Are you available? I'm like, yes. And then, you know, when I went in, when I was ready to do my Reiki master program, she actually had put it up on her website. And then I called her like that same day for it. And she goes, I don't know why I had to put it up there, but I was told to put it up there and <laughs> you were probably the reason why I needed to do that. And that's so awesome. that's how a lot of this yeah. stuff happens. So if you like overthink it and you work it so hard, you miss the stuff that's actually meant for you when it's meant for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so you also touched you touched briefly about asking your spirit guides. And I think that's also very critical, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, it's hard for some people because they don't hear them yet or yeah. at all. Um, you know, so, but that's, again, that's one of those things that you can actually work on if you were um, looking at a mentorship, like the different right. ways that can help you access your spirit guides um, and right, your spirit right. animals and, and things like that. That's, you know, for some people, yeah. that's something that they, uh, a thing they have to do. Other people, they hear them and don't realize they hear them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's uh, just another reason and way I chose to pull up tarot as being my first tool to learn to speak to my higher self and my spirit guides and the angels. So, yeah. Thanks for that. All right. And now on to the homework. If you want to learn the signs to look for uh, toxic spirituality and in a mentor, this is what you need to pay attention to. Again, what is the other person's energy? What do they feel like? Does it feel good? Does it resonate with you? Um, pay attention to their body language. Are they towering over you when they speak? Are they hovering close by whenever you try to do something? Are they encroaching on your space? And I want, I want to clarify that for me because sometimes people get very close and you can have those close in conversations. How does it make you feel? Do you feel intimidated by it? I encountered a woman once who was trying to intimidate me into doing something she wanted me to, and I wasn't going to do it. So I took a step back. She took a step forward back into me and I took another step back check in with how they make you feel what's your instinct what's your intuition about it because if they're going to make you feel uncomfortable no yeah exactly no, that's not the one exactly and i wanted to add the fast talkers i have experienced people who talk really fast because they want your answer right now because you need to give it to them right now so that way you know they can take your money so give yourself space like time space in that yeah. yeah. And then, you know, pay attention again to how, like, really how you feel when someone's talking to you, like, what's your emotional reaction? Um, you know, like, if you feel like something's not right, then you need to trust that trust what you feel, you know, what you're getting, even if it doesn't make any sense. So for instance, you, you could be talking with someone who you've talked with before. 
And all of a sudden, like, it just doesn't feel right. Like, pay attention to that. Take note of that. Um, you know, it's a gut feeling. Listen to your body. Yeah. Uh, give yourself time. You know, like, like Lisa said earlier, don't let them pressure you into an immediate response on anything. If you don't, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's some things, if somebody asks you a question, you can say yes or no. But if you feel like that's something that you need to take time to answer or time to think mm -hmm. about, then... Mm -hmm you know, give yourself an out in some way, say, you know, I need to make a phone call, or I need to go to the bathroom, or I need to get something to right. drink, or whatever yeah. it is, just so that you have some physical, mental, energetic space from this person. As frequently, you will get that information dump, because I, I sense it at some practitioners who are like, no, this is what I do. And I'm perfect. And I want you to understand that. And then, you know, help build me up because I'm so good. And that's when you go, that's, a lot, I, I will say, that's a lot of information. I need to, I mm -hmm. need to think mm -hmm. on that. And that's empowering yeah. to yourself too. Yeah. You, you can also blame it on a partner and say, I have to talk with my partner, especially when it comes to money and it comes to maybe say a ticket item over a hundred dollars, right? It's like, I always talk with my partner before making this kind of expenditure because we have a budget that we need to stick to, right? So use, use somebody else's excuse if you have to, if you're not feeling um, secure in your own sovereignty just by saying no or give me 24 hours to think about it. Yeah, or you, or I you think more say than... Yeah, you can just do any, you know, whatever your exit thing is, you know, be like, mm -hmm. well, gosh, look at the time, got to go. Or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is, just, you yeah. know, utilize, don't be afraid to utilize that strategy to give yourself some space. And mm -hmm. the other thing to think about is when, when you're, you know, kind of being railroaded through all this stuff, like don't, don't gaslight yourself, meaning oh, no. don't doubt what you feel. You know, like if you exactly. feel like, yeah, man, I, I'm like, you know, like this person's about to like put me in the box and ship me off to wherever they want me to go kind of thing. And, yeah. and you, you feel like, but that's not reasonable. Like, you know, there's don't argue with yourself on that. Like trust, whatever mm -hmm. you're getting mm -hmm. is probably mm -hmm. what is accurate and mm -hmm. just kind of go with it. There's exactly. maybe the hype they're pushing that makes you feel uncomfortable. The hype. I am so great. I am all of this. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. if you see it as a hype, that's, I mean, I, we recently had an instance where somebody was hyping up this job for my youngest and they kept pushing and kept pushing. And luckily we, we both had the clarity of mind to question it, mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. question it. And we thought for ourselves and because mm -hmm. Our, our both of our intuitions my youngest and I were like no nah, this feels kind of weird so that's 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 it that's it that doesn't feel right or that feels weird you know listen to that because we can discount that all day long don't discount that don't gaslight yourself sorry Susie I get really no, passionate no, about that's that that's great I'm glad <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I made a point <laughs> I'm glad I got something. Woo -woo. No, but yeah, <laughs> you, you got to trust what you feel. And that's, it. it's a process. We're all working on practicing it and, and understanding. And it gives you that space to think for yourself. Yeah, And nobody you know, needs to tell you, you what to do. Yeah, We encourage you to question everything. Yeah, Think for yourself, work with your yeah. intuition and your instincts. But at yeah. the same time, don't overthink it. Right. Because Keep it you simple. Overthink yourself right out of something that, you know, that actually yeah. is good for you. So you yeah. need to find that balance. And, um, but yeah, but don't, don't take anything anybody says at face value. You need to, right. you know, be discerning about stuff. And so exactly. question everything also means to question the, the mentor ask mm -hmm. them questions. And if they mm -hmm. are hedging on it, if they don't want to have that conversation, then you can adjust your, your trajectory from there, but have a conversation. Yeah. Give yourself I, I, that permission. I, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Absolutely. And so yeah, you know, yeah. when you come across someone like this, it's like, here's some suggestions for what we're terming exit strategies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing is, yeah, have a conversation with them just kind of feel them out, ask the questions and, you know, and just, and assess the answers. And if they're not, if they don't, 
if they're not all that in a bag of chips, like they say they are, then, you know, reevaluate where you stand with them and where you think that they can help you. I mean, that doesn't mean to say that they will not have any valuable information for you. They may Mm -hmm. just not be your primary person that you talk to for things. You know, it's like you you have to just, you, you have to do an assessment of things. So have a conversation, ask your questions, figure out what works for you, and then, you know, do what you need to do. Um, give yourself yeah. permission can I, to move on. Can I, can I just add something to that really quickly, Kai? And that is when you are doing assessment of your own skills and the mentors that you want to work with, also ask other people about those mentors, right? Get, get you know, understand their credibility and understand who they are in the, in the marketplace. So that way, when you do decide to work with a mentor, that that mentor has rep, has street value, right? Um, otherwise, if you don't have a good feeling about that mentor and you go and you ask somebody else about them, they corroborate, they validate what you're feeling, that's bonus. But yeah, as you're doing that assessment, make sure you do that 360 and make sure you're 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 checking the Yelp reviews as it were. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's good to check in with others in the community because, you know, I mean, there are people who are friendly with other people and other people are like, yeah, we don't get along so well. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. And, you know, so it, it, it bears checking because we're, we're people, right. There's some people you get along with other people you don't. And, you know, the reasons are many, but that doesn't mean that you can't still progress and you can't still find someone who can help you do what you want to do. Right. And it may, it may, may just boil down to, The fact that we're not saying you're not going to work with this mentor or you're not going to learn this skill ever. It's just maybe not right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, so give yourself permission to move on. As I said earlier, you know, sometimes people think, oh, but you know, when will I ever meet a a person like this who can teach me this kind of thing again? And Mm -hmm. it's like, you will when it's time. You know, we talked about that divine timing versus instant gratification thing. A lot of times mm-hmm. we want it right now because that's our expectations, mm-hmm. but spirituality yeah. doesn't work like that. You know, it works in universal time, which is not necessarily in conjunction with our own. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think that is critical though, to understand it may not be right now. Right. You know, for whatever mm-hmm. reason, whatever variable mm-hmm. is out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because there've been other healers where, they started off as healers and then their, their abilities shifted slightly and they focused more on another thing. And then they ended up shifting mm-hmm. back. And so they're, mm-hmm. you know, so they actually have a combination of the two that were separate, but now are together. So, you know, you can't right. think in, it's not, this is not the kind of stuff that you do in a linear fashion. It's not right. necessarily point A to point right. B to point C to point D. Sometimes you go to from A to D and then you circle back around the B and that, yeah, you do the squiggly thing. <laughs> So the yeah. hairball. Yeah, so you know, you, and you have to allow yourself to do that, and you know, and part of that is you know reclaiming your sovereignty. Like, be true to yourself. So if you start to do something and you move towards something and you realize that you know maybe I'm not ready for this yet, or I, I don't, or the avenue for that is not open, then mm-hmm. look for what is open, and and mm-hmm. take that route instead, and make that decision mm-hmm. to to make that change. And then when it's time, then you can make the decision to swing back in a different direction or to, you know, to do something else. Um, right. And there's always a possibility of a break in learning. So if you decide to, like, say, if you've been with someone for a while, a mentor or a teacher, and you feel like it's time to, to take a break from them for whatever reason, you don't necessarily need to justify it. If it just, if it feels right. like it's time, it's time. Um, then that means that the universe is allowing you to just kind of take a little bit of a break and take advantage of that to kind of, you know, be with yourself, straighten yourself out, do whatever you feel you need to do internally, whether that be shadow work or just practice the skills that you have, whatever it is, and then be patient because when you're ready, another mentor will show up. And I know that seems like such a cliche, but you know what? It's happened. It's the truth. I've seen it happen. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times it's happened that people were like, I don't, 
I don't know what to do, what the next person is. And then the, literally they will back up and bump into somebody and, oh, look, here's your new teacher. We've got to integrate the yeah. stuff. I can buy all yeah. the books. First, I have to read the books, but then I need to mm -hmm. integrate the information. Mm -hmm. You've, mm -hmm. There's so much energy going around that integrating it will help you find that balance. I keep talking about balance, the stability, mm -hmm. the foundation, mm -hmm. so that you, that next mentor does show up right when you need him. Yeah. Or, yeah. So, so don't mm -hmm. think that, you know, if because you're with a mentor that you're stuck with them for the rest of your life and that that's you know mm -hmm. this is all it's ever going to be and you're trapped in whatever you know spiral yeah. they've got you in it's yeah. like you have the ability to step out at any time for any reason and you know when it's time if you trust your instincts which you should be at this point mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you'll know when that time is and you can say to your teacher or your mentor, you know, I think it's time for me to take a little bit of a break and, you know, however they feel about it, that's on them, not on you, because you need to go at your own pace in your own time, in your own way. And so, you know, don't allow, especially if you happen to have a mentor that's narcissistic, um, you know, don't let them guilt you into staying or, you know, yeah. some other thing. or shame you. Yeah. yeah. Shaming, blaming, all that stuff. Like, don't fall for any of that stuff. Um, make your exit as clean and as peaceful and as loving as you can and move on. Yeah, exactly. And I, I like what Susie interjected and it's something I wanted to interject as well. And that is to integrate. Um, the one thing, one lesson I'm learning this past couple of months is to learn slowly and only with just a couple of modalities at a time, because once we, once the doors break open, you know, to Hogwarts, you're like, oh my God, I can learn everything. And then I discover really quickly how overwhelming it is because that one modality, it's so vast. There's so much to explore. And in doing so, in my personal experience, I experienced fear and I didn't realize it. I didn't recognize it. And that shut off my crown chakra because I was like, and I knew exactly why it happened, but I didn't know exactly when. I mean, I, I know why I was afraid, but I didn't know when the crown chakra, you know, got blocked. And I'm like, why can't I, you know, clear my aura anymore? Kai, help me out. What, what is happening here? And that can happen. It can happen to anybody at any time. So that's why I encourage everybody just to slow down and take a breather and let this integrate. And if, if fear does come up, figure out why that is, what that looks like. So that way you can address it and move on because then the doors will blow open again for you. But um, that was, you know, part of a learning lesson for me this weekend. Not going to get into it, but yeah, I mean, just take your time and take a breath because the one thing that Kai mentioned is if you stop and you pivot and you want to look for another mentor or another skill, just know that the universe is the source for your supply. So it is never ending. It's this bubble, this wellspring that will always be there for you. We've covered toxic spirituality day and hopefully what we've talked about gives you things to look for and things to consider. There is so much to cover and we are excited to cover these again at length in another podcast. Meanwhile, consider taking Kai's course on shielding at handsonfire.buzz, listen to Susie's podcast at bluelightninghealing.com, and perhaps maybe pick up my 2023 digital calendar that includes moon phase planning at co-create-magic.com. You've been watching the Mystic Mosaic podcast. Hit the like button if you found the episode helpful, and don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified when we upload another video. Next week, We'll be talking about the power of intention and the power of language. Feel free to join the conversation and tell us in the comments section what you liked about the episode. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover in the future, yeah, let us know. We love all of this. Thanks for watching. And until next time, stay grounded, shielded, and magical. <laughs>